Panther fans, get ready for a deep dive on all 22 because the, the film, film don't lie. lie. Welcome to this special holiday version of all 22. And you know what I want in my stocking? What's that? A Panthers win on Sunday. Sounds real good. I like that. Maybe Santa can get a two for one because I'd like that same thing. We all want it. We <laughs> all want it. Two for one. I, I, we I want like it. Deal. I like that. And I'm going to go out on a limb. We're going to get it because right now the Panthers offense is on the move. Last two, last two games, 31 points in each of those two wins. And it was necessary because the Panthers faced some tough competition, Minnesota Vikings first, and then Green Bay Packers. So I asked my Panther legend panel, what's working on that offense? Well, for me, you know, looking at that offense, I think that's really become well-balanced and they have so much talent over there, but they're really making use of whatever the game plan calls for, whatever they're able to execute. I think they're doing what they need to do to get some points on the board. And you look at the last couple of weeks, you know, the week before it's the Jonathan Stewart show and it's three touchdowns for him last week against Green Bay. You know, it's Cam Newton in the, in the passing offense. You know, the run game did great again with 151 yards, but by far you look at it, hey, they had four touchdowns through the air, two to Bird, one to Olsen, one to McCaffrey. Uh, they got it done through the air because that's where the opportunities lied. And I think that, you know, seeing Christian McCaffrey continue to get better, he's one piece of that puzzle that you can use him in such a variety of ways. It really opens up some things for the offense. And I like the way that him and Cam are really working well together right now. You know, on one of those plays on that first drive that went down for the touchdown, it's an important third and five situation. Uh, they do a little motion with McCaffrey, kind of get him moving around a little bit, get the defense thinking about him. But then they do the zone read with Jonathan Stewart. It looks like it's going to be a run. McCaffrey comes around that to the right side. And this just comes with working together for a while as you see how perfectly the pass is thrown, the swing pass out to McCaffrey, who catches it in stride, not only gets the first down, but, man, you know, he gets those 20 yards that really is a good chunk play on that first drive. And then, you know, he gets it nine touches that first drive, 60 yards total, but then he goes back to him to finish that thing off. And, and how great was that if people saw the exchange between Cam Newton and Clay Matthews? <laughs> That's the play we're talking about. It was a touchdown to Christian McCaffrey. They thought they were going to run one thing, but uh, Cam Newton had it, changed it up. Uh, Olsen comes off the line of scrimmage and does a good job pushing towards the end zone. It kind of clogs up a couple of Green Bay defenders there that Christian McCaffrey's able to slip underneath for the, the touchdown there and get the first points of the game. Uh, when you see things you know, like that, they have a balance between the run and the pass. I think that's why this offense seems to be clicking so well these last few weeks and hitting its stride. You know, one of the things that, uh, that like, like piggybacking off Kevo and saying Johnson Stewart was kind of the theme last week, I felt like the theme this week was Greg Olson and, and McCaffrey. Um, you know, you just saw them get them involved early on and, and very often. I think what's working for me and what I'm seeing is when you see Cam Newton smiling and he's chewing that gum, then you know things are going <laughs> really well. And, you know, when he's jawing and he's smiling and high-fiving, but I really see him using his feet wisely. And in a particular play that I was breaking down that I looked at, it was early in the first quarter. It was a third and eight. And you just kind of felt like this was a pivotal – uh, third down because they need to get this game off really, really fast. And Aaron Rodgers, he had kind of started off kind of hot on his first pass and kind of got them moving a little bit. And they, the Packers defense dropped back into a zone. And it was a three-man route for the Panthers. Cam looks, one guy's double coverage. Olsen's got good coverage on him. And so the play is breaking down. The pocket is collapsing, and then Cam takes off with his feet, and he's buying time. And when you really look at Greg Olson, he continues his route. So that Packers defender has to honor Olson because as DB, they call it a, sc a scramble drill. So if the quarterback is scrambling, you have to stick to your guy no matter what until that quarterback passes the line of scrimmage. And then you're free to leave your guy. Well, Cam hadn't left yet. So as Greg continues down, the linebackers are in good position. They see Cam. They're, they're in the zone read because they need to keep eyes on a running Cam. And, and Cam just slides to the left, 
and and they knock each other off, and he's able to pick up that first down. And I thought that that was really pivotal third down, and he got that by using his feet. And I think that that's where I see when his team is really doing well, he's able to throw the ball. Multiple people, multiple people are getting involved, but he's also using his feet wisely. I, I mean, it sounds like hey, it, it's a it's a mesh, it's a it's a perfect storm because you're getting the big plays. But then again, you're not missing the little plays. Yeah. And that's what you're talking about, Ruck, when you talk about a play that will not show up on the highlight film, but it's crucial to, as we always say, first downs lead to touchdowns. Yeah. And anything you do, keep drives going, especially this time of year, it's got to take place. Um, one of the guys that, that really showed out, I don't, I don't want to get you to talk about him, Demir Bird, when you look at his story, a lot of people don't know his story, undrafted out of South Carolina. I was there on his pro day when he got on the radar. He, I mean, he came blazing down the field, ran 4-2-40. All of a sudden, NFL guys are going, hey, let's look at this guy's film again. It was only like 26 catches at South Carolina. But here he is already in the NFL, two touchdowns in one game. <laughs> I, I, he's, I, I tell you, he's on the radar and he's off the radar with that speed. And when you, <laughs> when, Good point. When you look at his speed, and he, he's he's one of the, he's a really nice guy, and I think that that adds to what he's doing. And he's somebody that you really want to cheer for. And in a play that you know, in one of his touchdown plays, obviously everybody has kind of seen the replay because I think again that was a pivotal play where he's in the back of the end zone. He he finds a way. When I look at that play, there was there was three Panther players when I split the field in half to the right side off the play action. And and Bird is, is on the back, and he just slides and finds that open uh, window, and Cam just drills that ball in there. But the neat thing about it, though, and I, I, we were talking about it um, after the game, if it was one of these bigger receivers like mm -hmm. Funches, Greg Olson, you got a wide seat. <laughs> is that the right way to say you got a yeah. wide seat? Yeah. You might not have made that. So being little paid off in this in this game right here in this touchdown that uh, Bird had at the back of the end zone. And I thought when he got up, the whole crowd, the whole stadium just went crazy after after the replay. Yeah, yeah. but Kev, we said Sunday night, good thing he wasn't a size 32. That's right. <laughs> He's a size 30. 30. Yep. Well, that helped. That helped. That no, helped. and hey, being one of the smaller guys on the roster paid off in that circumstance. But, you know, you look up – what transpired before that play, I mean, the pass protection was unbelievable. Gave Cam the time to look for Bird. Uh, Jonathan Stewart really stepped up and got some pass blocking done up front, which was great. But then Demir Bird, you know, having that focus, that ball was zipped in there. And, you know, it wasn't a, a perfect pass, so he had to reach back for a little bit. There was a little bit of a, you know, bobble as he's trying to pull that thing in. But the focus, the concentration to keep that and then just get that left cheek down, that's all he needed. That's all he needed, and that play was called touchdown, which was great. And now, you know, later in the game, he gets another touchdown. And to me, you know, you see the focus, the hands, everything he did to get the first touchdown. The second one, just using that speed, just a, a basic route, coming straight off ahead, using his quickness, plants his foot, cuts inside, and is wide open. And Cam delivers a perfect strike. And it's just those are the things that excite you about this offense is that if that connection can continue, you saw the nine catches from Olsen. You saw the, the pass plays that Jonathan Stewart got. That's where they can mix it all around. That's yeah. where they can be balanced in the passing game. And then with the strong running game, uh, these guys are having fun. They're having fun. Uh, it looks like there's just excitement on the field, and, and the confidence level is just so high. Yeah, it's awesome to see. But was that second touchdown, guys, an example of, okay, now Cam trust you? Because to go to him in that situation, not mm -hmm. once, but twice, shows that this young man has worked very hard to gain that trust and done a great job developing. Well, look. They're going to need all these things we talked about on offense because this division race comes down to the last two weeks of the season. And that's why I continue to say the NFL is the daddy because you look at it, Atlanta at New Orleans, then the Saints finish up at Tampa, Panthers host Tampa, and then travel to Atlanta, a round-robin competition for the NFC South title. And it's fitting when you think about history, the way this division has shaken up. It's always been a battle to win this division. The the best division in football, bar none. Let's move to let's move to the traffic report. Mm -hmm. Mike, what's the what's the traffic look like on Thieves Ave? Well, 
there's there's some stealing going on in the traffic. <laughs> and uh, I shouldn't even say stealing because uh, they're, they're taking what they want. And okay. these last couple of weeks, this secondary has been very active in taking what they want. And whether it's a starter or a backup coming in because of injury, they're winning the turnover battle. And I think that's why you're starting to see – some of the points being scored and the opportunities for the Panthers. Hey, and, hey, but so you're saying the cones are up? The cones are up. The lines are painted. The lines the are painted. Are done. You've got guys okay. out there with stop signs like "stop, do not <laughs> enter." You know they are taking the ball. And, and I tell you what, um, there was one play in particular where the Panthers defense they send the blitz and the uh, corner blitz, and and Roger sees it coming, and he sees the blitz. And usually in a blitz, you want to throw where the blitzer's coming, and it's a hot route, and so. You look at Roger's eyes, he wants to go to his hot route, but Adams, um, Mike Adams steps down and he's got the hot route. So now he's got to scramble. And now you have some D-line pressure up in Roger's face, and Roger has to throw off his back foot, sideways, awkward. Um, and Worley, the receiver is in good position to have a shot at this ball, but Worley's in a better position and just goes up and gets the ball at the height of its point. And, um, again, when you've seen these last couple weeks – I tell you what, they're making up for maybe what the, their slower start in the year. And I tell you what, when you want to heat up, you want to heat up in December when it's cold and not heat up in necessarily September. And this secondary is definitely heating up, and I think it's paying dividends. Yeah, and Worley stepping up and also Bradbury, who had two takeaways in that, that same game. And, you know, what I see with Worley and Bradbury is the fact that these guys have excellent hands. How many times do you see DBs dropping some passes uh, where they had really good opportunities at interceptions. And these guys are making athletic plays. Bradbury did it on his interception, just an athletic play with the hands, the whole thing, intercepting Rodgers. I think that was a, a great momentum change in that game. And then more importantly, you know, the peanut punch. Late in that game, the Panthers needed a big play. And this second-year corner really came out and did a fantastic job of you know, securing the tackle, but in a very big moment, a big player came up and stepped up and did a big play by getting his hand around as he's tackling um, Geronimo Allison. He punches that ball out. Mike Adams mm. recovers, and that seals the deal. Yeah. That's the kneel down Huge. victory formation Huge. that offensive linemen love and defensive linemen hate. I hate. Hate that. Unless you're on the sideline watching that. your O-line doing the victory and formation. they're smiling. They're smiling, <laughs> doing that little victory, the best play. Hey, we're, we're, football. we're oh, going yeah. down. We're going down. You know, <laughs> everybody chill. Everybody chill. Oh, that's chill. aggravating. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I mean, here again, as we talk about, it's not just the big things. It's the little things. And, and uh, Panther fans, I want you to understand, anytime you win, it's not like you go in there, grab some popcorn, and just watch a, a movie. Like, I mean, watch the film. You know, like you're watching a, a feature film. Right. I mean, you you critically look at things that happen in a in a win just as much as you do a loss, maybe even more so if you're smart, because you don't want things that happen in that game. My point is, uh, a couple instances where some things had to be tightened up moving forward. One of them, uh, a couple contains lost on Aaron Rodgers in the mm -hmm. beginning of the game. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not going Mr. Negative. Uh, but another thing in that red zone uh, had some mis miscommunication on the, the the touchdown, the first touchdown um, that the Packers had. And, you know, here again, new guys coming together, working together. That's one thing that has to be cleaned up, doesn't it? It does. Um, you know, there's a couple plays in the, in, in the run game. It just uh, fits. But Aaron Rodgers was able to step up and, and, and slide out that B gap. So, these are things that are easily correctable. You just got to know who's back there and what they want to accomplish. I know as the game went on, Aaron Rodgers, as they started getting hits on him, mm -hmm. he he stopped wanting to do all that running. Mm -hmm. And um, that's something that they fixed it uh, halfway through um, the, the game and, and, and the correction. So that is definitely something. Each game you're going to have your, your positive things, but there's things that you always want to clean up. Kevin, have you played in a game where you got blitzed 31 times? Oh, I'm glad you brought that up, man. That You know, that's – the gift that keeps on giving because early on in the game, you may get some big plays by that offense as you're trying to make some big plays. 31 blitzes, obviously not every one of them is going to work or get home and get on the quarterback. And especially a caliber player like Aaron Rodgers, he's going to make some plays. But, man, you see the the you know what it does over time of that game. And you could really see, uh, especially in that second half, as the defense began to take over that game, you know, besides that late score by – Aaron Rodgers limited them to just three points, basically, in that second half. 
And, you know, that's what it does. And it just is it's pressure every single time and you don't know where it's coming from. I thought it was a great scheme. You know, obviously there's some things they need to clean up. It's hard to play the perfect game in the NFL. But, you know, I think Steve Wilkes and that attacking style, that's the kind of defense they want to play. If the defense is bought into it, they really understand that, um, you know, where everybody's got to fit in. And it's exciting to watch them play. There'll be some plays they give up. But you look at the total package and what they're able to deliver at the end with some big plays, it got them the win. I got to call an audible here. Okay. All right. Here's, the, here's, here's what I want to finish because you guys have been there. You've both been on this team together. When you clinched a playoff berth, and that the Panthers can do by going out and taking care of business in Tampa, what will those guys feel? What sense of accomplishment will they feel? It'll be good. I mean, because it is hard to get into the playoffs. And as you see how not only in the NFC South, but just look at you know both division AFC, there's something on the line for each team um, throughout this league. And I think that's why uh, when you're able to accomplish getting into the playoffs – because that's the thing. You could be 16-0 and 0, um, or 8-8, eight and eight, get into the playoffs, and it's a, any man's, any team's game. And I think that's why it's so uh, enjoyable to get into the playoffs because you know that you've got a shot. Because somebody's going home and they're on the beach the next week, you know, <laughs> you know, in the sun, working on their tan, and you still have an opportunity to win that trophy. And that's why I think once, you're, once they come in and say you're in, that's a great feeling. Hey, I'll say this. The Super Bowl representative will come from the NFC South. That is a battle-tested division. You look at what they've done outside their division and also in the other conference, they have just won games. The Panthers have done it. Really did a great job against the NFC North. Did a great job against the the AFC East. Maybe one loss between those two, right, Mike? And Mm -hmm. so... This team knows how to play some football. The, you, you know, it's just these four teams are beating up on each other in the division. So I think once they get out of this little round robin, as you called it, and come out of this, I think that's going to set up one of these teams that they're battle tested. They each have a quarterback that's been to the Super Bowl or won a Super Bowl. That's a lot more than some of the other younger up and coming teams from the NFC can really say they have. And the pressure increases. Mike knows that. Yep. You know that. It gets massive. It doesn't just rank up a little bit. I mean, it goes full zero to 60 real quick. And that's a big pressure on these guys. And I think this is a team that's playing its best football with these last two games to go. I don't think there'll be any letdown against Tampa Bay because there's no love lost in that division. It's not like you're playing somebody, uh, you know, out west or something at some, you know, Oakland Raiders weird game. If This is the South. Mm-hmm. We play good football in the South. The Super Bowl champ, I believe, or at least the representative, hopefully the champ, is coming out of the South, and it's the Carolina Panthers. All right. All right. Merry Christmas Uh, to me and Panther. I guarantee you. (laughs) Yes. Well, you heard it here first. You heard it here first. Panther fans, as always, if it happens between the lines, we'll talk about it on all 22 because the the film film don't don't lie. lie. We'll see you next time.